Hey guys, Toll Car Players here, and I'm Toll Car Player Tariq, and today I'm going to be your host. Now, I'm sorry, it has been a while. I've just been flooded with work, schoolwork, and a lot of things going on, but I have made a large number of decks for you guys. I will be getting a few more in the future for Magic. I do have some more content coming. I just want to say thank you for the views, and sorry for the wait. I'm going to try to get you more videos out by this week and next week, so expect a good amount of videos. I'm going to say thank you so much for the views. I did not expect quite Queen to pop off as much as it did. I thought Queen was a very underrated, non um, imp uh, popular commander, but I guess I was wrong. So we're gonna go over Ramos today. Um, and that is all I have to say for the intro. Let's get started to the deck. So Ramos is our commander, and this is based around Mutate. So Mutate is basically these creatures with abilities where you can put it on top of a non human, and they do a plethora of weird things. So how this works is we're going to play a lot of things, play more things, use Ramos' ability, play even more, and just kill our opponents with out advantaging a big field and swarming our opponents for death. So Ramos the Dragon Engine is a legendary artifact creature who's a 4-4 and costs 6 colorless with flying. Whenever you cast a spell, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Ramos for each of the spell's colors. So let's say you played a Simic card, which is green and blue. Ramos will get two counters. And this stacks, so it doesn't matter. It's not like once you play those colors, you can't play it anymore. It'll, she'll just keep constantly getting counters. So um, I have B big decks that are very powerful, like Urza and stuff like that, with this deck before, so it was pretty good. And um, it is very on the pricey side. Now, this is where I left budget um because this is one of my favorite decks of wooberg and when i mean i left budget this deck cost me around 150. that's where i left budget usually i feel like budget's like 200 less for commander but sometimes you can go as far as like 20 dollars of a deck i have done that numerous times before so i feel like this was overextending my usual because usually i'm at a certain price point but that is the price of the deck and what makes Ramos so good is that bottom. You remove 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters from Ramos, and you add 2 of each color of mana to exist. You can only use this once per turn, which is a good way to limit Ramos, but that is 10 mana into your mana pool to cast out your whole entire hand, which is very effective, which is how we're going to be playing Ramos with Mutate. So anyways, let's get into the deck profile. And so we are playing 3 mountains in total. 3 mountains is a good amount because we do have a lot we have four swamps four swamps i'll explain more after i've done going over four plains four islands and four forests so obviously this is a weirberg deck so we need to run five of every single land but also the only reason why i'm running three mountains is because i need more deck space so i had a lower mountains because most of your mutates are either green blue white or black in the first place Mountains are just there for certain spells you need, and you do need to make sure you always run more forest or just the same, the highest amount of forest compared to everything else, because you do need to play things like Rampant Growth, Farseek, Kodama's Reach, Cultivate. You need that early ramp with green, which is why green is our main color of choice for this whole entire deck. But uh, this that's the only reason why I run less mountains, is because the color the colors that you mainly need are these four, not mountains, but you do need that Wooberg. But that is it for my land choices for basics. Next for our special lands is Path of Ancestry. What's good about this is since our commander is colorless, it taps for Wooberg. Command Tower, same exact concept, it taps for Wooberg. Evolving Wilds for Fetch. Miri Landscape for Fetch. Fabled Passions for Fetch. You need more Fetch lands, which is why I did go out of budget just to buy a Fabled Passage. Do I regret my decision? Probably. Uh, Ash Barons for uh, Mana Fixing, John Panorama, Nine Panorama, and Grixis Panorama, all for fixing. Another Term of Expanse for fetching again. And then for non fetches, we have Shrine, Temple. You need that two mana, it's really good. That's mean Stage because you can copy Temple and then have two Temples. Ghost Quarter is a really good thing. If, like, let's say I'm going to get some black deck. And they're running like Urborg and Cabal Coffers, and they got the Cabal Coffers and Urborg out. Get rid of it. It's really good if you need to get rid of something powerful like that. And Rogue's Passage. What's good about Rogue's Passage is that we can actually kill with commander damage with this, which is why Rogue's Passage is such a good land in here. And that is it for all the land choices. Next, we have Cauldron of Souls and Door to Nothingness. 
these are the only artifacts you're running that doesn't require uh, well i meant that aren't mana rocks cauldron of souls is really good because of uh creatures uh get persist so i'm gonna tell you how that works real quick so let me just grab a mutate so when you're using a uh, mutate and you have another mutate on top of it let's say you have this mutate right here so if they're all about to die you can tap this and give them all persist so what's going to happen is when they die they they're not the same creature anymore they break apart which means that they will come back onto the battlefield separated which means you will have more creatures than before. So this is good for saving from board wipes. And um, I made a deal with one of my uh, friends in a game, in a practice game, where I uh, where I used um, this. He was playing Infect deck, and we were uh, kind of losing. We were kind of winning. So I said, and he and one of my our opponent board wiped. So I'm like, you know what? Let me keep your stuff alive so you can kill him with Infect. So this is actually very good um, bargaining chip two if you need to because you can protect everything so you always want to bargain and uh, make deals with this card if you want to keep that going and then door nothing is as good because if you use ramos you kill your opponent so i did use this to win a few games just door to nothing is my opponent for game and really good now like i said everything else was mana rock so arcane signet mana geode commander sphere thought vessel coalition relic thalwar stone chromatic lantern and soul ring this is probably the most expensive artifact I have ever paid for when it comes to, like, artifacts in general. Like, Sol Ring, Chromantic Lantern, Felwar, Coalition, Thought. Um, these are your cheap ones. Uh, gotta pull that. These are your cheap ones. These are your pricey ones. Like, this was, like, four. This is ten, and this is three. For some reason, this thing can get reprinted so many times, and its price will never go down, just because of how effective and how everyone plays it, and that that's nerve-wracking, but, you know, that's how it works. But, yeah, so this is uh, the last of your artifact lineup. All these are mana rocks. You need them, especially Commander Spear is a good one. I remember I pulled a really epic turn one, actually. Um, I'll explain that turn one pretty soon, but anyways, let's continue into enchantments. These are pretty low. Um, we just have Journey to Eternity and uh, Minions Return. Uh, I have more than that, by the way. Just gonna explain these real quick. Minions Return is good if we need to protect Ramos or Mutate. Same for Journey to Eternity, because what happens is Ramos can be a large target because we either are about to kill them or um, Ramos is doing like a lot right now for me and just letting me play out my hand. So uh, this is why we need to protect Ramos. Plus, it is an early game target once you play it really early. I think the earliest because it ramped out so hard I played Ramos was turn 3 because literally my hand was pure ramp and I just ramped it out pretty quickly. And um, Journey to Eternity is also a good one, and this is one of the pricier ones because that flip where we get um, the cave because you can't add one man of any color, but you can also start returning creatures from your graveyard, and that's really the important thing about Journey to Eternity. Right. Lastly, we have Greater Good and Sunbird's Invocation. Greater Good is toxic. I remember I got Ramos up to like 25 power. I sacrificed it while Ramos was attached to Dream to Eternity. I drew 25 cards, replayed Ramos. After I used Ramos as a minus five, played out my whole hand out of 25 cards, and I just like kind of won the game right there and then and there. So uh, this is really good if you have that Ramos combo. Then Sunbird's Invocation is probably nearly one of the most powerful cards in the deck because whenever you cast a spell from your hand rule the top x cards of your library where x is spells converted mana cost you may cast the card revealed this way with current mana cost x or less without paying its mana cost put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order so literally i played out my whole entire deck in a single turn with some invocation because it if you play those high expensive mutates for the mutate cost this goes off of their cm uh cmc so uh, what's gonna happen is you play it like let's say the mutate card costs five in mana But it only costs you like three to mutate you're gonna Play the, you're gonna look at the top five cards and play a card from there And this does affect Ramos because it is still casting you can just cast it without its mana cost But Ramos doesn't care if you cast without paying mana cost She only cares about casting it and if there is color in the CMC so that is it for the enchantments Resistance are pretty hard to build around, so it's a pretty weak instant lineup, because literally, uh, I think I have like 40 creatures, uh, don't quote me, please. Uh, so, my instants are Grizzly Salvage, Spell Swindle, and D-Spark. 
Sell Swindle, easy, counter, get a ton treasure. D-Spark, uh, get rid of something annoying. But really, um, uh, there was a game where I looped eight times with Ramos and a Mutate in Grizzly Salvage, where I kept looping Grizzly Salvage eight times, Ramos ended up getting 16 counters, and I kept searching off the top of my deck. I kept filling out my graveyard. The reason why I was doing this was because I had Apex of Death on my field, which means instead of actually putting something in my hand, I could have just put a land, and I could have gotten rid of a good creature. And uh, if I mutate with Apex of Death, I would have given, I would have played that creature from my grave, which is why this loop was very effective and very powerful. And uh, the reason why I run Spell Swindle is because, obviously, uh, you get the treasures, and that is it. Now, you could fix this up and run something else, but uh, I suggest keep this. I don't care about these two, but keep this at least. Trust me, it's really good. First series, we have Eerie Ultimatum. This is good, because if you do suffer from a board wipe, you just get everything back. Regrowth is also good if you need to return something. Painful Truths, draw power, obviously. Ponder, more draw power, plus an uh, early turn lets you look. Jace's Triumph is really good because we do have a Jace Planeswalker in here. And uh, plus it is just draw two cards. Conflux is really good if you just tap out your lands to play this and not use Ramos. Search powerful things out of your deck, then use Ramos and play things out of your hand. Really good. Diabolic Tutor because we're not about to pay for Vampiric or Demonic Tutor. Bring to Light, also really good search because... Uh, we do, we're not paying colorless for it. Kodama's Reach, Farseek, Rampant Growth, Cultivate. Obviously, your four, uh, the four sorcery ramps, uh, which I really love. I play this in mostly all my Ruberg decks. Uh, obviously, you can never not run these four cards in a multicolored deck if you have green, because the early game ramp is effective and very powerful. But that is it for my sorcery lineup. I only want run one, and I chase the Arcan Strategist. Now, there are only two reasons why. Well, three, actually. It's Hunter card. Um, because whenever you draw your second card, uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature control. Which means you can uh, build counters on Ramos if you wanted to. Then, uh, he does, he has a draw advantage, and, um, it's his minus seven, that's really important. Creature you control can be blocked this turn. So instead of wasting Rogue's Passage, you can ult him, make everything unblockable, and kill all your opponents at the same exact time with his ult. And that is the only reason why I am running him in this deck. Long list of creatures, let's just start with the non-mutate creatures. Uh, Polywalk Symbiote, obviously, because it is a good draw, and it does make your mutates cost less. Ukima, the Stalking Shadow, is broken, because it's unblockable. I literally, I didn't even, I didn't even play, um, it was a game I was going against Urza. I guess he didn't open up well enough. He didn't mulligan twice, so he couldn't, like, he didn't want to go any further. Um, and basically, um, what happened was, he didn't have anything... And I just kept swinging with Ukima, swinging with Ukima, swinging. And I had Kazur out and Ramos. And then I just kept mutating uh, with counters onto Ukima, kept swinging, kept swinging. And I literally won the game with just playing Ukima. And playing with Ukima, and that's really good. Then, obviously, we have Kazur. Kazur is good because Ramos is a flyer, so Ramos will get counters if you uh, tap sideways. Itali is also really good because um, if you're going against a non-color stack, you can uh, definitely get some counters on Ramos. And if you're going against a color stack, you are making them blue stuff. So that actually doesn't matter. Itali is just very good. Then we have Spark Double. Spark Double is really good because you can copy Ramos. You can copy Ukima. You can copy anything. And that's really good. You can uh, Then Clever Impersonator. What's good about this is if you copy Mutate and you have a legendary creature in there, it doesn't matter because um, it'll just be there. Uh, Birds of Paradise is really good. It isn't cheap, um, but you do need that uh, color of any color. And that is it for my, uh, for my non-Mutate creatures. To Mutate creatures, we have Apex of Wishes, Apex of the Hunt, Apex of Forever, Vad Rock, Apex of Thunder, and Apex of Death. The only reason why I didn't get these two in um, Showcase is because this Showcase looks ugly and stupid. And this one was $6. So, I said no. But I did get these in Showcase. I don't like how Brokos looks on his regular card, so I had to get these two in Showcase. Uh, they look better in Showcase, don't they? But yeah, that is, there's, there's more, don't worry. There's totally more.
We have Boneyard Lurker, which is really good because you can start returning stuff from to your hand. Gem Razor to pop things. Dirge Bat to pop things. Also really good. Majestic Oracorn is good for gaining life. Cavern Whisperer, start getting rid of your opponent's hand. Cub Warden, token creation for more mutates. Hemophage, life gain and um, pain. Chain Harvester, sacrifice. Archipelago Lore is really good. Uh, what I did was I mutated this onto Ramos, which already had eight mutates attached to it. Trust me, there's a good reason. I'll tell you more about that. Tapped out my opponent's field and just smacked him across the face. All right, then we have Pouncing Shore Shark. Really good for bounce. Lord Drakus is uh, how I did that loop with uh, Grizzly Salvage. Glowstone Recluse is another plus one plus one counter mutate. Necro Panther is just good for returning things. Porky Parrot, damage. Auspicious Tricks, good for playing out your whole entire deck. Mike Tor Great Horn, good for mana. Trumpeting Gnar, good for getting more into your field. She Dasher for draw power. Dream Tell Heron for draw power. Flockapete for more counters. Mind Leecher to start to get really annoying. Parcel Beast for uh, card advantage. And Otrimi for um, returns. So, that is it for the Mutate Creatures besides the Mutate Creatures, and that is it for the deck. Now, uh, I'm going to quickly go over a few things, and if you're wondering how in the heck did certain things occur, like how I said in the video, how they did. So, it was really easy. I had Ramos out, right? So, this is how, like, uh, Ramos just get, and I'm getting really beefy. So, I had Ramos, and I had, uh, where is that? I had um, Glowstone Recluse. And Volca Key attached to it, which means every time it mutates, it'll get she'll get three counters minus the um, ability, right? Then uh, I decided to start mutating a lot. So what I mutated on was actually um what where is it at? Um, I gotta find it. Ramos Archipelago, which made all the mutate triggers, right? Then I had Bone your lurker mutated onto there so i can uh, get more advantage then i um had to actually this was a good mutate choice actually uh there was also my uh trumpeting nari met was already on there which means that i was mutating a lot ramos was getting really big i was creating a big field and then after that i then had a mutate consisting of apex of death then, to go even further than that, I mutated Vadrock onto there. So, what happens, what will then happen is, uh, you're going to let Vadrock trigger. So, uh, you can turn, uh, you, you may cast it through your less convert mana Jesus Christ. You may cast it through your less convert mana cost, a uh, card that's a um, non creature uh, without paying its mana cost. So, what happens first is you're going to use that. Grizzly Salvage, and then you can use Lord Drakus for whatever you want. Grizzly Salvage, uh, then get a ton of creatures into your grave, Apex Death. Then I kept mutating onto this, and I just mutated so much I looped Grizzly Salvage a few times. And that just became overall powerful. But that was really the main combo I wanted to show you. If you just loop with uh, Apex of Death, no matter what, Ramos is going to be bigger than anything to ever exist. But yeah, so that is it for the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Toll car players out. Peace.